Welcome back to the mole and stoichiometry. Finally, we're getting to the stoichiometry part of this. We're going to be balancing equations, doing stoichiometry, including excess limiting problems, and percent yield. Let's go. Let's start with balancing equations. Remember that atoms are conserved, so there will be the same number of each type of atom on the product side as there were on the reactant side. Mass is also conserved, so the total mass of the products has to be the same as the total mass of the reactant. So here's a couple of equations for us to balance. We have CH4 plus O2 makes CO2 plus water. I want to kind of think of this in terms of how the molecules might actually look and what it means when we actually balance equations. So CH4 is a C with two H's. O2 is two O's. CO2 is an O with a C with an O. And H2O is an H with an O and H. For the moment, you don't actually have to Think about how or why I put double bonds or in which order I put the molecules. We'll get to that later. But the point is the number of molecules per compound. So if we were going to balance this equation, we would notice that this carbon is going to go in between these two oxygens. And then the hydrogens are each going to need an oxygen to go in between them. So the hydrogens are not forming H2, but they're forming H2O. Which means I need some additional oxygens in order to make this product. So let's see, if I put another set of O2 there, that means that these hydrogens can take one of these oxygens, and these hydrogens can take the other one of those oxygens. But that actually leaves me with two sets of water, so another whole set of HOH. So think about how the reaction will actually look on a molecular level, even if for the moment you don't know how the molecules connect. So let's get that out of the way just a little bit so we can balance the equation itself. Notice that I have one C and four H's. On the left I have two H's, so I'll put a two there. That'll give me four H's, one carbon, one carbon. There are four hydrogens, two oxygens plus two more oxygens on the right-hand side, which means I need a total of four oxygens or two O2s. Let's think about the next one in terms of how the molecules actually look. A potassium is just a K. A water is an HOH, a KOH is a KOH, and a hydrogen is an HH. Don't forget about the diatomic molecules, Hanoff Kupri. That's H2N2O2F2Cl2Br2I2. These diatomic molecules will always exist as a pair. They will never exist individually. And just keep that in mind and don't forget about it. So again, looking at these molecules the way they'll probably connect, I see that a K is going to go with an OH to make the KOH, and an H is going to go with another hydrogen. But there isn't another hydrogen, which means I'm going to have to have another water. So if I have another water, let's make that green, then I can see that these two hydrogens will go together to make an H2. But now there's an additional OH, which means I'm going to need an additional K, so this K can go together with this OH to make KOH. So overall, I'm going to end up with two of the KOHs and one of the H2. Let's look at that in terms of the letters themselves. Notice I have one K on the left, one K on the right, two H's on the left, and three H's on the right. So in order to fix that, I'll put a two on the right, which gives me four hydrogens, and a two on the left, which gives me four hydrogens. When I did that, that's two oxygens, but don't worry, I already put a two in front of the KOH, so that's two oxygens. And then I'll add a two in front of the potassium, so the potassium's balanced, and now I have a balanced equation. So when we're doing stoichiometry, that's relating the number of moles of one product or reactant to another using a balanced chemical equation. That balanced equation is a really important step. So let's just get started and try one. How many grams of KClO3 must be decomposed to obtain 3.5 grams of oxygen? So that means that this reaction, KClO3, is going to make oxygen. And you're going to have to guess the second product, but since I've already used up oxygen, my product is going to be KCl. So let's write what the question's asking underneath the actual question. How many grams of KClO3 must be decomposed to obtain 3.5 grams of oxygen? Now since I need to change and figure out how many moles of one product are reacted, I'm going to take that 3.5 grams of oxygen and convert it into moles. 32 grams of oxygen 
is the mass of one mole of oxygen. Notice I use 32 because oxygen is O2, not single O. So now I have moles of oxygen. I'm going to compare the moles of oxygen to the moles of KClO3 in my balanced equation. Oh wait, balanced equation. That means I'm going to need to balance that equation. So KClO3 has three oxygens, O2 has two oxygens. We're going to balance that by putting a 2 and a 3, and that means I need two KCLs. So that's telling me that the ratio in this balanced equation is two moles of KClO3 for every three moles of oxygen. That is your conversion factor. Two moles of KClO3 for every three moles of oxygen. That's how you're going to relate the moles of one product or reactant to another. And then I would be totally done, except the question is asking for the number of grams of KClO3, so I'm going to need the molar mass of KClO3. So K is 39.1 plus Cl is 35.5 plus oxygen is 3 times 16, or 48. When you add that all up, you get 122.6 grams per mole. So KClO3 has a mass of 122.6 grams per mole. So in this, we have one mole of KClO3 has a mass of 122.6 grams. Now I can finally solve. So I'll have 3.5 divided by 32 times 2 divided by 3 times 122.6. And when you multiply that all together, you end up with 8.5. 9396 and rounding that to three significant figures because of the three significant figures in the original problem we will have 8.94 grams of KClO3 and that's stoichiometry so let's make it just a little bit trickier so in this question antimony can be prepared from its sulfide ore by the following two step process so now i have two equations to deal with let me go ahead and get those equations balanced to start with so I don't have to remember to come back and do it later. So I've got SB2, that's two antimonies, and SB4 on the right, that's four antimonies, so I'll put a two on the left. That gives me six sulfurs, and I've only got one sulfur, so I'll put a six in front. And let's see how many oxygens that is. Six oxygens plus 12 oxygens is 18 oxygens, so I'll need a nine here in front of the O2. For the second equation, I've got four antimonies on the left and one on the right, so I'll put a four. I've got six oxygens on the left, so I'll put a six to give me six oxygens, which is also six carbons, so I'll put a six in front of the carbon. So the question says, what mass of antimony, that's the SB alone, will be produced from 1.0 kilogram, just to keep this simple, that's a thousand grams of ore that contains 23.2% by mass of SB2S3. So this is actually a percent composition problem and a stoichiometry problem all at the same time. So 23.2% by mass, SB2S3, means out of that 1,000, 23.2% is SB2S3. So if it were 100, that'd be 23.2 grams. 23.2% of 1,000, 23.2% of 1,000 is going to be 232. So actually I'm starting with 232 grams of SP2S3. Okay, from here on out, now I've gotten you started, try the rest of it on your own. Pause the video now. Okay, well hopefully you did. Let's start with what we know, 232 grams of SP2S3. Now stoichiometry is relating the moles of one thing to the moles of another. So I'm actually going to turn that 232 grams into moles. Hopefully you took the opportunity to find the molar mass of SB2S3, and that's 339.9 grams. That's 2 times antimony plus 3 times sulfur. Now from there, I'm going to look at the moles in the balanced equation. So I have to find a connection between the top equation and the bottom equation. Do you see that there is in common an SB406 in both equations? So I'm actually going to relate moles of SB2S3 to moles of SB406. And once I have SB406, I'll relate that to SB. 
So from the original balanced equation, two moles of Sb2S3 is the same as one mole of Sb4O6. I guess it should be two moles of Sb2O3 will produce one mole of Sb4O6, which gives me a total of 0.3143 moles of Sb4O6. Problem is I'm not looking for Sb4O6, I'm looking for Sb. So I'll take that original number, 0.3143 moles of Sb4O6, and now I'm going to use the second equation because the Sb4O6 is the same in the top one and the bottom one. One mole of that will produce four moles of antimony. Now it would be done except that it's looking for the mass of antimony, so one more step, one mole of antimony based on the periodic table has a mass of 121.8 grams. Now just a quick side note, when I calculated this 0.3143, I did not clear my calculator and retype it in. I just left it in my calculator and kept multiplying from there. So my final answer is going to be 166.27 to three significant figures. That'll be 166 grams of antimony produced. Okay, so now we have an excess limiting problem. This one is going to be the most common kind of stoichiometry problem. If you have set quantities of two different reactants, one will get used up and some amount of the other will be left over. The one that's used up is the limiting and the one that's left over is in excess. So the limiting reactant and the excess reactant, the ones that are used up and the one that's left over. So how many grams of NH3 will be produced when 14 grams of hydrogen reacts with 84 grams of nitrogen? Remember the first thing about a stoichiometry problem is the balanced chemical equation. It's super, super important. So the equation says how many grams of NH3 will be produced. In other words, NH3 is the product at the end of the arrow. When hydrogen reacts with nitrogen, those are the reactants at the beginning of the arrow. So balancing that, I'll need a 2 in front of the N and a 3 in front of the H2. Now I can look at the stoichiometry. How many grams of NH3? 14 grams of hydrogen, 84 grams of nitrogen. So we're actually going to have two separate problems here. One is going to be trying to figure out how much ammonia can be made from the 14 grams of hydrogen, and the other is going to be trying to figure out how much ammonia can be made from the 84 grams of nitrogen. So we'll have two separate problems. Let's give ourselves a little bit more space. All right, so let's start with the first one, 14 grams of hydrogen. And we're going to try to figure out that grams of hydrogen, how many grams of ammonia will be produced. But remember, stoichiometry compares the moles of one to another. So we need to actually figure out how many moles of hydrogen this represents. Remember, since hydrogen is diatomic, there's two H's. It weighs two grams. From the balanced equation, I can tell that three moles of hydrogen will produce two moles of ammonia. So now that's the stoichiometry part, converting moles of one to another. And we would be done, except it's asking for grams of ammonia. So we're going to have to convert that final answer to grams. And it's 17 because nitrogen weighs 1 and 3 hydrogens weigh 3. So if you multiply and divide, you end up with 79.3 grams NH3. So for the other problem, 84 grams of nitrogen, we're going to do the same thing, try to figure out how many grams of ammonia can be produced. So 84 grams of nitrogen. Nitrogen is another diatomic molecule. It's 28 grams, because it's N2, for every one mole of N2. And then based on the balanced equation, one mole of nitrogen will produce two moles of ammonia. The mole-to-mole -mole step always comes from the balanced equation. And again, we're looking for grams of ammonia, so the same last step as we had before. Changing that into grams. So after you multiply and divide, hopefully you get 102 grams of ammonia. 
Okay, so let's talk about what these answers actually represent. 14 grams of hydrogen per reacted will produce 79.3 grams of ammonia if there's plenty of nitrogen to go around. And 84 grams of nitrogen will produce 102 grams of ammonia if there's plenty of hydrogen to go around. So which one are we actually going to produce? And that's going to be the smaller of the two. Because there's not plenty of hydrogen to go around, there's only enough hydrogen to make 79.3 grams of ammonia. There is not enough hydrogen to make 102 grams of ammonia. So I'm going to pick the smaller number, which means the nitrogen is going to be in excess, and for the excess, I like to X it out. So I don't forget that's in excess. The second half of this problem says how many grams of the excess reactant will be left over. Now remember we said that the hydrogen was limiting, and the nitrogen was excess. And if we used up all our hydrogen, we'll end up making 79.3 grams of ammonia. That's not very pretty. Let's see if I can fix that. 79.3 grams of ammonia. So you can actually start with the hydrogen or with the ammonia. I kind of like to start with the hydrogen in case I messed up somewhere. So I'm going to start with the 14 grams of hydrogen. I know that all of the 14 grams of hydrogen are going to get used up because it was the thing that was limiting. So how many grams of nitrogen will react with 14 grams of hydrogen? Again, hydrogen is 2 grams per mole. And this time my mole to mole step is hydrogen to nitrogen. 3 moles of hydrogen will react with 1 mole of nitrogen based on the coefficients in the balanced equation. Pretend there's a 1 there. But we're asking for grams, not moles, so a mole of nitrogen has a mass of 28 grams. So when you multiply and divide, you get 65.33 grams. Now that's how much nitrogen is used up with the 14 grams of hydrogen. So that's not how much is left over, that's used up. So to figure out left over, we started with 84 grams. So if we subtract the used up, 65.33, I get 18.67 grams left. 18.67 grams of nitrogen is left over because 65.33 grams was used. What's the percent yield of that reaction? So percent yield is the actual amount of product produced compared to, or divided by, the theoretical amount that should have been produced. So the formula here is actual yield divided by theoretical yield times 100. Actually is real, theoretical is what it should have been. So if we look at our previous slide, we'll note that we should have made, had everything gone correctly, 79.3 grams of ammonia. But we actually only made 72.6 grams of ammonia. So 72.6 is going to be the actual yield, what we actually made, and 79.3 is what we should have made. Maybe on the way to the balance pan you dropped some, or you sneezed and some of it blew away, or something happened. So the math there is the actual yield. You really did make 72.6 grams divided by the theoretical meal, re, yield. According to the math, 79.3 grams should have been made. And to make it a percent, multiply it times 100, and you end up with 91.6%. The closer this number is to 100, the better your yield or the better you've done. Okay, well, I hope you learned a little bit about stoichiometry and excess limiting and percent yield. We'll see you next time.